the end of the home service for today and for all days. In one sense, I suppose we're like a bride on the eve of her wedding. We go on being the same person, we hope, but we will never again have the same name. Tomorrow at 6.35 a.m. we become Radio 4. So, goodbye, home service. Two of the best words in the British language. Last scene of all that ends this strange eventful history is second childishness and mere oblivion. Sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste. Sounds everything. Teddy Poppers and Finger Poppers, we're going to do the thing right here with the Emperor Roscoe on Caroline South. Emperor Roscoe da Gama, first American de discoverer, like destroyer, destroyer. Ah, oh, brush your teeth, Roscoe! The real competition, as far as radio was concerned, came in the 1960s with the rise of pirate radio stations. Had it not been for them, there would have been no Radio One. Just for fun, music, too much. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to the exciting new sound of Radio One. There were, of course, some other people who thought that the pirates had been better than Radio One. And in 1971, the IBA, the Independent Broadcasting Authority, was empowered to license an eager group of new independent local radio stations. This is London Broadcasting, the news and information voice of independent radio. Welcome to LBC. Now, increasingly, particularly with the development of commercial radio, there's more emphasis on narrow casting, on the appeal of radio to specific audiences thought of as markets, and really giving them what they want. New. New. Take me, oh my darling. Melody Radio. Melody Radio. St Johnston nil, Adrianians two. So Liverpool, Everton, and Ipswich Town all failed. In if radios themselves have changed, then the magic ether above us that they believed in in the early days of radio certainly has changed too. Only ninety years ago. The ether was empty. Then there were the first few voices of radio. Then there was the one transmitting station in Britain, then two, then three. Then a sudden rush of commercial stations. And the difficulty is to tune in the one we particularly want from this, this Tower of Babel above us. What has been lost, I think, not least in the years when the in increasing emphasis has been placed on ratings and on commercial considerations, is the sense of mystical potency that was there at the very beginning of the life of radio. It's interesting to turn back to what is perhaps the most interesting book that Reith ever wrote. And he wrote it in a few weeks in 1924, when he was very new to broadcasting. We are confined on every hand by the limitations of human intellect. And so we speak of sounds and colors, and therewith our content, till we realize that these are merely the forms in which the ear or the eye has interpreted a situation for our brain to understand it. 
we are missing infinitely more than we are receiving and we shall continue to function defectively until the means may be found to ally thought with ether direct and to broadcast and communicate thought in the same manner as a receiving set is today tuned to the wavelength of a transmitter so that there may be a free passage between them. I sometimes wonder that uh, if modern technology could enable us to travel faster than light and indeed faster than wireless waves travel, whether we could ride alongside in a spaceship, ride alongside the wireless waves and listen in to the broadcasts of yesterday. Maybe if we could fly fast enough, we could hear Dame Nelly singing in 1920, Home Sweet Home, from that mysterious space that Marconi took us into. Oh, <laughs> 